Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here again, and today we're talking about what I believe to be one of the most common causes behind poor sleep, insomnia, and fatigue. Sleep is a huge problem for many of us, you know, and according to the National Sleep Foundation, more than 50% of people this year reported experiencing some sort of insomnia more than once a week. So I would say that a good 90% of my patients, men and women, regardless of, of the condition that they're suffering with, really struggle in, in one way or another with sleep, but also fatigue, mental focus, and, and really mood. And so many of my patients will tell me that they feel like they're in a chronic state of brain fog. And so in today's video, I wanna share with you some powerful information that I believe will have tremendous meaning to you. Uh, it'll help deepen your understanding of the causes behind sleeping disorder, sleeping problems, brain fog, and hopefully it, it'll help you uh, in your search for a natural solution rather than a toxic drug approach. You know, studies continue to show more and more uh, about the connection and some of the causes that exist between the disruption of sleep and hormonal imbalances. We're continuing to see research pour out in terms of sleep disorders and how blood sugar dysregulation can lead to, to these sleeping problems. We're also seeing how sleep disorders and functional imbalances in a part of the brain called the mesencephalon can lead to things like headaches and migraines and dizziness and vertigo and again, more fatigue. So, but we're also seeing how things like infection and foods that we eat on a daily basis can be causing sleeping problems. The point here is that many of the potential causes behind sleep disorders are rarely looked into. And it's really critical that you work with a doctor who's going to look at the big picture and really start thinking outside the box. Something I also want you to consider uh, through watching this uh, today's video is that sometimes poor sleep is really a warning sign of something much bigger, okay? It's a symptom of something more problematic that might be going on inside your body. And if all we do is medicate these symptoms away, it's, it's really like taking the batteries out of a smoke detector and leaving the house to burn down, okay? So again, it's always important to investigate the different symptoms that our body creates in an attempt to warn us that something is wrong. Well, two of the most commonly overlooked areas when it comes to good sleeping uh, really comes down to the health of your adrenals and the stability of your blood sugar levels while you're sleeping. And so the adrenal glands, uh, if you're not familiar with them, they're, they're two little glands, they sit on top of your kidneys and they really secrete hormones that really help stabilize your body's blood sugar. And one of them is called cortisol. Cortisol plays a tremendous role in the health of your thyroid as well. So cortisol also plays a role in inflammatory responses in your body. So if you have a lot of chronic pain and your joints are chronically achy, adrenals could play a role in that. Imagine if you need to toss and turn all night long because your joints are just uncomfortable and every time you lay down after you know, a few minutes or you know, 10 or 20 minutes of pressure on them, you have to turn. And this goes on day after day, night after night. Obviously, you can see how it can make sleep virtually impossible. Now, a common pattern that I see with many patients that have uh, adrenal disorders is something called adrenal hyperfunction. This is where the adrenals are overactive, and a lot of times this can cause an inability to fall asleep. These are people who uh, usually, and I say usually, they have no problem staying asleep once they get there, but getting there can be a tremendous problem. Now, there's also another kind of adrenal problem, which is called adrenal hypofunctioning. This is where you have an underactive adrenal, or maybe something you may have heard termed adrenal fatigue. Now, the symptoms here are exactly just the opposite. These are people that are going to have trouble staying asleep. And I find that these people, um, these people are more uh, typically found, typically find themselves in an anxious state or an acute stage of adrenal stress. Now, some of the other symptoms that someone uh, who experiences underactive adrenals might experience would be things like craving of salt. They might have a low pulse. So in other words, if you check your pulse and you're in that 40 to 50 to even 60 range, that's a low pulse, okay? So we typically think of athletes uh, as being the ones with this low pulse and it being very healthy, but often we see people with adrenal problems who may be marathon runners who also have adrenal hypofunctioning. Um, people that have hypofunctioning adrenals or, or, weak fatigue, uh, or weak adrenals, these are people who also may, uh, upon standing or getting up quickly, they experience dizziness. And so everything starts to get fuzzy and black, okay? They're also slow starters in the morning, okay? They experience fatigue, typically at 10 a.m., 12 in the afternoon, 2 p.m., and 4 p.m., okay? All those times where your adrenals are actually um, pumping out uh, a cortisol at those specific integrated times. People that have uh, hypofunctioning adrenals often have afternoon fatigue, they have afternoon headaches, and they have many other symptoms which we'll talk about here in just a few minutes. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually show you two patients of mine, and I wanna bring up their tests so you can actually see what both of these actually look like when we test them. 
Now the first is a male patient, okay, and his test results uh, you'll see here in just a moment. He's suffering from adrenal hyperfunctioning, okay. The second case is a woman who is on the other spectrum. She's hypofunctioning. She's in a state of adrenal fatigue and adrenal exhaustion. Now remember this, adrenal fatigue happens in stages. Depending on how long and how severe your adrenal fatigue is, is going to determine if you're either in a hypo state or a hyper state. We typically don't see people fluctuating from hyper to hypo drastically from day to day to day, okay? Now, I do have a video that I put together as well as an article that we'll post at the end of this video that really describes these stages in a whole lot more detail. And I would encourage you that after you watch this video, you go back uh, and obviously watch that video, okay? So, this is a male patient of ours. He's 50 years old. He's experiencing anxiety, insomnia. He feels like his heart's constantly racing. Uh, of course, he's had a, you know, uh, a whole cardio workup. Everything is normal. Uh, he's been to the emergency room several times. Uh, for several years, he's had joint pain. He's had a loss of libido. He's had gastrointestinal distress, and he's had headaches, okay? So what you're going to see here is a couple things. One of the tests we ran was a test that evaluates the adrenal rhythm and cortisol output. On this test here, there are a couple things that I want to point out to you. The first aspect of this test is the green shaded area. This is really the reference range. This is where you have to be. You don't want to be above this line. You don't want to be below this line. The second thing I want to bring your attention to is that when you wake up in the morning, your levels should be at the very highest. And as the day progresses, you'll start to notice that that green level tapers down. Well, that's the same thing that should happen with the blue line. Now, if you look at the side of the graph, okay, you're going to see that the amount of cortisol that's produced and if you look at the bottom of the graph, these are the times that sample was collected. So in this particular case, we collected at 8 a.m., we collected at 12 p.m., we collected at 4 p.m., and then we collected again at midnight. And so this should really make a lot of sense to you if you're out there and you're suffering with sleeping problems or, or energy level, or, or energy loss rather. You want to wake up in the morning and you want to have lots of energy. So you want, your, you want your cortisol levels higher in the a.m., higher in the morning, and as you get ready to go to bed towards the evening, you want your cortisol levels to be at the lowest point. Now, this is the normal rhythm that is really essential to healthy cortisol functionality, okay? Now, the next thing we look at is this blue reading, okay? You can see here that this is a patient's actual reading or his result. And as you can see with this patient, this person starts out with just skyrocketing levels. He stays high at noon, which is the second dot, and he continues to stay high at the third and the fourth dot. Uh, this is a big problem, okay? If you look at his levels at midnight, his levels are over 110. And if we look at his total cortisol load, which is at the bottom, you're gonna see it was at 382. There is no reason for this to be happening, and it's really no wonder that he can't fall asleep, why he feels overwhelmed with life, why he feels on edge constantly, why he's anxious and why he's irritable and why he has chronic pain. Now, when we evaluate someone for insomnia or anxiety or chronic pain or fatigue or really any of these other health problems, it's so important to have this 24-hour saliva test done. It's critical, I would say. Um, many people who come to our office, they have a one blood sample of cortisol, and this is, for the most part, to be quite honest, this is a useless test because your adrenals pump out cortisol throughout the day. So it's very important to see where this rhythm is. Now, with the kind of testing that you can see here that we did in our office, we can see what time of the day the breakdown is occurring so that when we look at this graph, we can actually deliver the proper nutritional support at very specific times of the day. Now, this is the next person I want to show you. This is a woman, like I said earlier, she's in her 40s. This woman's a teacher, and when she first came to our office, she could barely get out of bed. She would go to work at 8.30, and by 12 o'clock, uh, she'd have to take a nap in her car for 30 minutes before she could go back to teaching. And then when she got home, the first thing she'd want to do is really go to bed. And she'd be exhausted at 7 p.m., and then she would do that again the next day and the next day and the next, next day. And she would toss and turn almost all night, uh, you know, waking up at 2 a.m. and at 4 a.m. And this went on for about five years prior to working with us. She would describe herself when she first came into our office as just a walking zombie, which some of you, if you're watching this video, you might be able to totally relate to that. She felt dead on the inside. She hated her job, not because she didn't like students. She, in fact, she loved students. The thing was, is she felt terrible from day to day to day. Now, if you take a look at this green line, you're gonna see, uh, I'm sorry, if you take a look at this chart here, uh, again, we're looking at the green line, 
And if you take a look at the blue line, you can see that the blue line here, which is the patient, is well below the green. And so that's indicative of a problem in the hypothalamus, uh, the pituitary system, or what we call the, H, the hypothalamic pituitary axis, which again is your brain. Now the next thing you're going to notice is that her cortisol output is 16. We typically like to see these numbers between 38 and 40, okay? Now if we look at the morning cortisol, you'll see it's 9, so it's very, very low. And then again, we'll start to see those numbers 19 or 20, or I should say I like to see those numbers at about 19 or 20. And again, no wonder if we look at that 8 a.m. time zone, uh, she basically is a person that is ex exhausted and she just doesn't want to get out of bed. Now remember this, your adrenals do a lot of things, okay? They're not only responsible for fatigue, for fatigue they also help mobilize sugar in our body, helping keeping our, our, stable, our, our blood glucose level stable. They help break down glycogen or fat into glucose, uh, and this keeps a steady stream of fuel delivered to the cells of our body. Now, what's important to understand here again, is I say this to patients several times of the day, is that when it comes to brain performance, your brain needs fuel and it needs activation. Fuel comes in the form of glucose and oxygen, and if your brain is deprived of glucose because it can't mobilize and break down glycogen into glucose, you're going to feel brain fog, you're going to feel dizziness, you're going to feel uh, problems with focusing, problems with concentration. And for many people who are in this state of adrenal fatigue, they also suffer with difficulty staying asleep. Now let me explain that to you because maybe you're watching this video and you have no problems falling asleep, it's just that you wake up multiple times throughout the night and then again, you can't stay asleep. Remember what we said, the adrenals help maintain blood sugar levels. So as your blood sugar levels start to drop through the night, well, this is a fasting state, the body can go into a stress response. And without adequate cortisol levels, remember cortisol brings up the body's blood sugar levels, the body is going to release adrenaline and noradrenaline. And that's the body's attempt to, again, raise the blood sugar levels. Now remember, adrenaline is a stimulatory horm hormone, right? It's a hormone that you hear about when a child gets pinned under a car and 80-year-old grandma comes along and she lifts up the, the, the car off her grandchild, right? That's adrenaline. It's a very, very powerful hormone. It can do some amazing things. And this is a hormone, as you can imagine, with its stimulatory nature, can wake you up in the middle of the night. Hopefully, showing you these two cases now, it's much clearer as to why you're having trouble sleeping, why you feel fatigue, and why you may be in chronic pain. So now that I've just shared with you these two cases, and these are literally, I've seen hundreds of cases like this, but what really breaks my heart is that both of these people went from doctor to doctor to doctor, suffered for years before finding our practice and really getting the help that they need. And what happens for most people who suffer with anxiety or insomnia or fatigue is that for the most part, these people are really told that everything is normal, right? Don't worry about it. You know, you're just stressed out. Many times their family members think they're just lazy or family members and friends really just don't understand why you feel the way that you do. Again, most traditional doctors only acknowledge the two extreme cases of adrenal dysfunction, which again is Cushing's disease and Addison's disease. And this is why this 24-hour saliva testing is really just so important. Now, the other thing I want you to know here is that the problem with acknowledging these extreme cases is that typically, uh, you know, these, again, may be warning signs of other underlying conditions. There may be a diabetes. There might be um, a metabolic syndrome. There might be an insulin resistance issue. But once upon a time, these issues really didn't exist either. So just like adrenal fatigue in the minds of traditional doctors doesn't exist, well, once upon a time, metabolic syndrome and prediabetes didn't exist either. So if you've been told that everything is normal or you feel that your doctors really are not listening to you, they're, they're kind of blowing off your insomnia or your fatigue or your brain fog, I want you to realize how serious that is. If that's the case, I want you to contact my office right now. If we're not in the office or it's after hours, leave us a message, leave me an email, and someone from my app office will contact you shortly. Please, don't live another day suffering and thinking that there's nothing more that can be done and that tomorrow is just going to be another tiresome day in your life, okay? If you visit my website, uh, drhagmeyer.com, I have a lot of other different videos there, articles there that will help you understand more about these confusing symptoms that you're experiencing. And I want you to show these videos to friends and family members who may not believe you. They don't understand the connection. They don't understand what you're feeling. Millions of people around the world feel this way, okay? 
this message really needs to get out and I hope to hear from you soon. I hope you find my website valuable and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Until next time, take care.